everyone, it's Agatha, and today I, I've been meaning to make some videos about mental health stuff for a while, but I never got around for it, to it just because it's so personal, I don't know, and I wasn't sure what to say because I, I always forget everything when I'm in front of the camera, but I thought I would do a video on childhood onset OCD. Um, that made it sound really fancy, I meant more like my experience. <laughs> um, I thought it would be a good thing to talk about because it's like essentially over since I'm an adult, so it's something I could reflect on easily and not feel like I'm <coughs> talking too much about myself now either, you know? Um, sorry about if my voice seems weird, but it's just because I'm still sick. Um, anyway, childhood onset OCD is OCD that has its onset or start before you're eight years old, so, well that's pretty early in childhood now that I think of it, but I guess later they'd call it adolescence, but yeah, um, I've started to notice, oh that's another thing is I still have OCD, it's just, I got it at a young age. <laughs> um, I started to notice, well, I can first remember having OCD symptoms when I was about five. Um, I just had sort of these obsessions with things. I mean, that's what OCD is. You have obsessions and then you usually feel like there's some things you have to do to try to shake the feeling or the worries you have. There is OCD that's just obsessive, but it's less common. Usually people are trying to do something to feel better. <laughs> um, yeah, when I was little, it could be like any little thing I would be obsessive about, since when you're so young you don't really have a sense of what's important or not. I was never worried about a big issues so much as I was about small issues, or I guess the big, it depends on how you look at it. One thing that really worried me was religion. Um, I also worried a lot about the sort of well-being, the general well-being of any inanimate object. Um, I say inanimate object because I wasn't convinced things weren't animate. And honestly, I'm still not really convinced, so <laughs> that's another thing, though. But, so I was aware of the idea of God for as long as I could remember. Um, I was mostly exposed to the Christian idea of God, um, although I'm Jewish because uh, my mother is converted to Christianity, so that's what she was aware of or told us about, except I didn't really understand it well enough to have discretion about religion, so I was just always focused on the idea of heaven and hell and what could get you in there. <laughs> um, I would kind of thought anything goes. I thought doing bad things, which could be stealing, um, and stealing to me was like, um, eating a piece of cake off, like, <laughs> swiping off the cake in the kitchen, or like, um, taking a coin from my dad's, like, coin jar, or like, drawing on the walls, or just like any of those things I would worry I would be going to hell. And so I would just develop like these really complicated prayers I would do. So like at night before I went to bed, I would count to, don't laugh, it, 666 was my lucky number. Because 6 was my lucky number, so, and 666 was I guess the highest 6 number I could count to. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't choose like 6,000 or something because I never would have slept. Already I would stay up so late because first I'd count 666, 
then I had to do like a prayer before I went to bed um, and in the prayer I would pray for like the safety of all like my toys or like my family like every little thing and if I forgot I would keep going and like add on and it, I get I don't know how long it would take I mean I didn't sleep that well I would stay up till like um, 11 p.m. like with my sisters or whatever because I was dreading going to bed and like having to do all this I guess and then when I was in bed I would just keep like going on this prayer that would like the beginning of the prayer was I'm sorry for and then I would like list anything I thought I did wrong that day and then I would say I'm also sorry for anything I might have done wrong just in case I missed something because you don't want to get snuck into hell because you forgot <laughs> <coughs> and so then after that I would move on to like and I would think about like where each like toy or whatever like plush toy or anything I had where it was in the house and say I wanted it to be safe um I would also say about my family and I would also like pray that like my family like wouldn't go to hell or anything cause that, that's pretty bad at going to hell <laughs> there's nothing after that I'm laughing talking about it now but I was dead serious um so that was when I was about six, I'd say it was the one I had that the strongest. Um, I was generally very anxious about everything going about my day, so I had a plush bunny purse toy. Uh, I wish I had it with me to show you guys, but she was like rabbit with like a white sort of cream colored rabbit. I think you actually can see her in my room too or video. But she was sweet and I would just carry her around everywhere I went, I guess, to ease anxiety pretty much from when I was like five until I was like eight around that period of time. Um, I was re always really worried about my space, like we had sort of a finished basement um, in the house we lived in when I was around that age um, that had all my siblings and my toys and stuff and there was the portion of the basement we called the dollhouse that was most of like the girl stuff like dolls mostly mostly my dolls I was very like I was very obsessive about how everything was arranged and if anything got out of place or like toys got mixed in or my siblings were like playing like raucously like near them I would just freak out so I wasn't very good to play with and I remember I would get in trouble for, trouble for like bullying and stuff because I like did not get it because to me like the rules about where everything were and how you handled everything it was always so obvious to me that I didn't really get that to other people it wasn't like that, that they were just playing and whatever happened, happened. So that was kind of um, awkward. I remember, like, the thing is about that is, like, no one ever, like, tried to, like, mess anything up to upset me until they noticed that I was bothered by it, and then, like, I remember my sister would move stuff around to try and bug me, like, if she felt resentful of me or anything like that, she'd move things or mess things up to get me riled up, because I was really, uh, <coughs> I was really strong-willed when I was a little kid. I would just talked all the time, and I was really bossy and play and always wanted my own way. Um, people always have trouble believing that when I tell them this now, more like when we're, if I make friends now, they're like, really? But I was quite a, I was quite a child in that way. Um, I always wanted to be talking and doing really, um, intense discussion or play with a lot of rules and complex stories or whatever 
else I, or else I would just arrange things <laughs> if I wasn't like doing some kind of elaborate game. But that's kind of getting off topic, but I was really specific anyway about how tours and stuff were arranged and I had a lot of anxiety about that. Like, sometimes I'd even worry about, it, like, lying awake at night, oh, where it's like that, did I put this in the right place, did I forget something that's, and something's out of place and it's gonna be this way all night, oh my god, <laughs> like, there was also this fan in the bedroom, I slept in the same bedroom as my parents, um, and my younger sister, and we had a, like, a fan for white noise. But I would, like, start freaking out and obsessing over the fan because it would make this noise, like, it really wasn't any, like, kind of complicated noise. But to me, I was, like, freaked out by it. I started to hear, like, sort of, like, this voice of this, like, kind of, um, this sort of, I would sort of, like, create, like, a sort of demonic, Mm, chant to it so it would so it would just be going like shh really but I would hear like this <laughs> that's kind of like how it sounded to me and I would just get freaked out hearing that at night and thinking about it and the fan seemed sort of alive to me and I would just I don't know why it worried me so much but it really did. Um, I also worried about, like, I had some sort of more, I guess, benign compulsions. Like, I would worry about, like, mm, the dishes um, in the kitchen. Like, which ones I used to eat. I would only eat with a small fork. I actually still have a preference for that. But at the time, that was, like, I'd eat with a small fork or I wouldn't eat, like, it. When I went out to restaurants and stuff, I was okay, but at home it had to be the small fork. Um, I remember when my OCD was really bad, I would only, like, eat with my toy rabbit with me. Like, I would hold her under my arm, or, like, have her in my lap, or on the table. She always had to be there. And then as it gradually didn't get, was not quite as bad, I would put her on a shelf while I was eating. But, of course... <laughs> That sometimes worried me because something could happen to her or something while I was there. I wasn't like a little kid, like, who has drags around, like, the toy with them. I was, like, really careful and, like, incredibly anxious about, like, the upkeep of this rabbit. Like, I thought of her as alive, so, like, every single day I had, like, a drawer of bows and stuff, like, that my mom or my grandmother gave to me or that I made myself or little knit scarves and things for my bunny and I would like put them on her a new one every single day and I was always wanting her to be washed and I would just wait outside the washing machine watching her go around until she was finished and like oh wow I was always so worried about any like little damage to her I'd like go to my mom like freaking out like oh my gosh is she okay does she need this does she need to be washed or what's like, I was just... One day I really became convinced that she was sick. I thought she was dying or something. I really don't remember exactly what it was. It's it's hard to remember the details of these things because they don't really technically make logical sense. But I thought something was really... Something really bad was happening to her. So I was just, like, crying, like, all evening. And I was talking to my oldest sister about it. And, like, my dad, like, noticed I was, like, crying and freaking out. And he's like, it's okay, anything you've done, like, we're not mad. Like, if you've broken something, just tell us. It's okay, it's not worth, like, freaking out like this. But I couldn't tell them for some reason. I was just, like, freaking out. I, was, I don't know how that even ended. I think I just, like, <laughs> spent the whole evening just, like, crying or whatever. I guess eventually I just went to sleep and sort of forgot about it. Um, another thing I had about when I was sleeping at night is before I went to sleep, I would tell myself these stories that were like, sort of just ritualistic stories where the same thing always happened. I don't 
really know how they were comforting to me because they were always really morbid or like kind of like sort of messed up interpretations of things I heard or saw on TV. Like I had this one story I would tell myself about this girl and she was like maybe a little older than I was at the time. I was like six and she had like this blonde hair. She really looked like a, one of those little model girls on TV. And like in like this sort of like story she would eat and eat and eat and eat and eat like a really big pile of food and then like her stomach would just like get like huge huge like she was like pregnant with 20 babies so big and she'd like lie down and then like a doctor would come and be like you ate too much so now I have to cut off your stomach. I guess that's how I understood <laughs> surgery and he'd like the doctor or whatever would like cut off her stomach just like saw it off <laughs> straight like this and then that'd be <coughs> and then she'd be like kind of cured and that would just be it some kind of noise I don't know um another story I had was about this like really really like bad like mage he worked like at this castle um but she wasn't really good at all at, at it and so she would always just be like fooling around with other employees like <laughs> I don't know what kind of tv I was watching <coughs> um and then she'd almost get fired but she wouldn't get fired because she'd like grovel at her boss or whatever I don't know <laughs> what kind of story that was. I think that one was a little, when I was a little younger, before I had that story with the girl who has her stomach cut off. I'd say around the same time I had that story about the girl who had her stomach cut off, I had this story about this one girl who was like, she was like really like this cool character. She had like this really straight dark hair and like, I imagine she was 16. It's crazy that I, this character I imagined was 16, but I didn't know anyone that age, so I thought of that as like being like a really kind of cool age, like a adult kind of, but still like young enough to be doing weird, cool things. And she had like this like boyfriend, and they would have these crazy fights, like. I think just stuff I saw on TV because my parents never fought like that or anything or I didn't know any ones who did but they just like would be like yelling and screaming at each other and waving their hands around oh my god and then they would make out and make up <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know what I thought what this kind of story was like I think it was just like these really cathartic kind of storylines I was attracted to and I would just tell these to myself before I went to bed or whatever. Really weird, honestly. I don't know. Um, what else sort of compulsions and obsessions did I have when I was a little kid? Hmm. Um. Oh yeah, back to the table, um, table compulsions that I forgot about. I always had to, when I was younger, like five, I always had to finish my food last. Um, so I referred to myself in my head as Dr. Finish Last. Some of this stuff is pretty imaginative now that I think of it, but yeah, I considered myself Dr. Finish Last and I wouldn't leave the table or finish eating until everybody else had. <laughs> I also had to use a certain chair, which was marked with a bow. Because one day, like, before Thanksgiving or before something, I freaked out, worried that all the chairs would get mixed up and I wouldn't know which one was mine and then God knows what. <laughs> so I would always use the same chair marked with a bow. It might actually still just have the bow on it because we never removed it. <laughs> which is quite a long time for it to have a bow, especially since we've moved since then. But, um, I then... I guess I'll finish by telling you two specific stories about my OCD I had when I was little that I think are kind of good examples of what it's like, if this isn't something you've experienced. Um, one of them is 
friends, so you know My Little Pony, like the little plastic ponies and stuff. When my sisters and I were little, we had a lot of them. We still do have them somewhere. Um, and there was this one I had that was sort of a, I forget exactly what it looked like, but it was a sea pony. It was sort of a teal color, I think, shaped like a seahorse. And then one day I must have dropped her on the ground or something and my dog at the time, she chewed off the head of the pony and I was like, like just things like that were just like so disturbing to me like and then I would have like these nightmares after that that like the pony got was like I, that I was in this water park, I'd have this repeated nightmare that I was in a water park all around and there were all these slides going down but I was just sitting in the water that was rushing like in sort of a cavernous place and I was playing with a pony and it slipped away and fell down the water slide. I would have that nightmare all the time. <laughs> Which doesn't sound like a big deal, I guess, now, but to me at the time, or even now to me, that still sounds scary. Um, but I got a replacement for this pony, um, eventually, that was, it went pretty well. The replacement I still have, um, my mother bought her for me, and I remember before we bought her, I would look online at the picture before she came in the mail, because my mom bought her online, and I would look at the picture every night with my mom. Um, eventually, I couldn't look at the picture anymore, and I remember being, like, upset about that. But I was definitely happy to have the new pony. Um, I couldn't look at the old pony that had had the head bit off. Sometimes my dad would show it to me. I don't know why dad sometimes think that kind of thing's funny or whatever, but I was like, oh my god, ah. It was just so disturbing to me. Another story also relates to toys, and I think a lot of people have had this experience. I had a Furby, okay? You know the robot, fuzzy animal toy that, like, plays games and stuff? You can play red light, green light with it. It'll say, you're my friend, or whatever. And I had a Furby when I was eight. And I would play with it all the time. Everything was cool. And then one day, I had the Furby was just in my sister's, my two older sister's room upstairs. And then my um, younger sister got a hold of it, um, and she tore off its nose. It had a rubber covering its nose mechanisms of mouth opening, um, and she took it off so it was like the Furby skeleton was showing underneath, and I was, I was not okay with it, and like, so I went to try and turn it on, and then like, the Furby said, like it started like moving around and talking, but it couldn't do it right, and it said, you're my friend. I was gonna say you're my friend, but just kept going, friend. It was dead. It was, oh my god, I was terrified. And so I turned it off, and I was like freaking out to my mom. I was like, oh my god, the furry's broken. The furry's broken. Oh my god, why did you let my sister go? Like, because I was like upset that my sister got a hold of it. <laughs> and my mom was like, you're eight years old. It's just a furby. <laughs> like, it's fine. I thought she was playing with it nicely. And I was like, to me, I just like, I was just like, I was so disturbed by seeing like this thing that I thought was of as alive was like disfigured and like no longer like functional. And I went behind the curtains. Like there was like, we had like these silky scratchy curtains that I liked to go behind when I was little. And I just stood, like, between the curtains and the windows, you know? And I was just, like, looking out the window dramatically, thinking about the Furby and how I'd failed as a mother. And, like, oh, my God. I was so upset. Um, I think... I don't think I stayed upset about that one too long, though. I think just the rest of that day. Because by that time I was older, 
Um, and I wasn't quite as, like, I'd say my OCD at that time was, like, that bout of OCD was, like, worse to when I was, like, six. And I remember my mom did, like, apologize to me. was, like, she was, like, okay, I'm sorry, like, about the Furby. <laughs> <coughs> um, but, yeah, so it was always, like, things like that, I guess, with childhood OCD. Like, always these little things that, like are not actually a big deal, but and when you're a child they seem like a big deal, and then when you're a child with OCD it's just like this incredibly huge deal, like, to freak out with all the time. Um, I'm sorry about the organization of this video, this is just, I don't know, I like to watch kind of videos like this sometimes, so I hope it's enjoyable. It's awfully personal, obviously, but... <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye. Like, subscribe, comment.